prisoner, Steve, who was killed in Amer uh, killed an American soldier and blinded another, gets an apology and an eight million dollar check from the Canadian government. Omar. Kadar is a Canadian citizen and claims that his rights were violated when he was detained at Getmo. Here's Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau defending the $8 million payout. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms protects all Canadians, even when it is uncomfortable. When the government violates any Canadian's charter rights, we all end up paying for it. Saturday. Even if it's uncomfortable, it's okay. That's okay to write an eight million dollar check and let him out. Lane, that's offensive, isn't it? Oh, it's totally offensive. This man kills somebody and then gets a check for eight million dollars. You know, eight million dollars. Cotter's not even. He's not even dead. It's just crazy that uh, the Canadian government. Uh, even if the guy's rights were uh, were violated, that's worth eight million dollars. He had a bad day at Gitmo. He didn't have a shoulder to cry on at Gitmo, and you want to give him eight million dollars? Where is the scale? Where is the justice there? There, there is none. Born in Canada, Omar Khadr's childhood was steeped in Al-Qaeda ideology. His father, a friend of Osama bin Laden, took him to Afghanistan to fight. When the U.S. invaded after 9-11, 15-year-old Cotter was shot and captured, accused of throwing a grenade that killed American soldier Christopher Spear. He became the youngest detainee at the notorious U.S. prison in Guantanamo. Well, in 2002, we were, we were uh, tracking, uh, we were hunting Omar Cotter's father, who is an international uh, terrorist and fundraiser for o Osama bin Laden. We tracked him to an isolated compound, uh, he had left, but he had four or five guys there along with his son, Omar Cotter. Um, we sat outside that compound for 45 minutes trying to get them to come out and talk to us. Finally, when the rest of my team showed up and the Afghans we were working with, um, they, they started uh, a firefight, decided to go out in a blaze of glory, shot our two interpreters and uh, threw grenades over the wall at the rest of us. We ended up killing all of them, shooting Omar Cotter. In that firefight, uh, Omar threw a grenade that uh, landed too close to me. I didn't see it, and a piece of shrapnel hit me in the eye and blinded me. So it, it, it's, it's so, it is so crazy. I mean, I don't know what kind of sick, twisted ivory tower Mr. Trudeau has to live in to find that this, uh, that this makes any kind of sense. But to those of us down here on the street who are walking around, this totally sucks. Uh, there's, there's, it's just crazy that you'd give somebody like that eight million dollars because his feelings got hurt. I know he spent time in Guantanamo. That was due to his own actions. I know. That's why I say there was deliberate intent on, on the Trudeau government to not only shield Omar Khadr from any repercussions legally from this, but uh, they gave him that eight million dollars in secret. Uh, told him, Omar, you got, you know, we can't hold, keep this secret forever, so you better get that money and get it secure before the Americans come after it. Um, so, yeah, when, when Trudeau says that, oh, no, he, you know, they negotiated in good faith, they didn't negotiate in good faith. They, they, they just wholesale jumped on the Omar Cotter bandwagon right. with both feet and f have funded him and extremist uh, jihadis f for... Uh, a good share of money. What do you think, John? I mean, I guess there's a legal argument. There's also, does he deserve it? He was the arguments made. He's a child soldier. Yeah, and by the way, most forms of litigation end in some kind of settlement or plea bargain. It's, it's, it's hardly unusual that this would be settled before the, the, the case goes uh, to its full length. Uh, from a moral point of view, I do think he, he does deserve it. He was a 15-year-old uh, child, as was mentioned in the setup package. He was uh, the youngest a detainee at Guantanamo. What do you think beyond the legal yeah. arguments here? I mean, it does seem that uh, Cotter is becoming the lightning post for a lot of the frustration uh, that's felt by the right in terms of how this government has handled, you know, a bunch of issues. Um, and I, I think they are scapegoating him. And I think that they're, in some cases, uh, w willingly misleading the public, even in terms of having Peter McKay, who is the former attorney general. He should know full well that the charter does apply to Canadians, uh, whether or not you're found in Canada or not. And yet you hear him 
spewing out those talking points. I would say Aaron O'Toole also is another Conservative MP who has gone out there and on murky water, who by himself is also a lawyer, so he should know better. And that's what I find very troubling about this, that well, this isn't just feelings. This is actually, this is the law. Well, if we could step back from that, I, I, it's true. He, he did admit to throwing the grenade. Um, I come back to the fact that uh, it was on a battlefield. Uh, usually when we use the term terrorist, we're colloquially, we're talking about people who blow up buses and restaurants and that sort of thing. Sergeant Spear, who was the victim, uh, it, was, it was obviously horrible that he died, but he died doing what he was trained to do. He died in a proper pitched firefight in Afghanistan. And it's not, and when people say, oh, he was a terrorist, yes, he was trained to be a terrorist, but it was actually a military engagement in which this took place. And I should also say... Well Like about a law.